guys welcome back to my channel so today we're going to be finishing part three of what remains of edith finch i think we're coming up to the towards the end of the game i'm not sure but right now we eat as edith we are in i think this i don't know who this is uh wait hold on sam spent his life shooting photos oh. but mom said he got nervous being in front of the camera i guess we're all afraid of something okay so we're in sam's room apparently he's edith's grandfather grandpa don's dad so yeah we're gonna be finishing up right there we're starting off where we left off so without further ado let's get started okay this is sam 1950 1983 so he his twin brother's calvin okay so he's a military one Dawn, oh. I promise you'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are going to last a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Am I going to have to shoot anything? It's a hunting trip, Dawn. Shooting is strongly encouraged. Oh. What? Perfect. I have to zoom in. It's going to rain the whole weekend, isn't it? Oh, we'll never goodness. forget this weekend, Dad. That's the spirit. Okay, got it. I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. Oh. Hmm. Hey! <laughs> That's a keeper. Definitely should not have drunk all that coffee. I'm just saying, I'm not always gonna be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff. If you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was going to be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. I know, Dad. You're always serious. Doesn't being out here make you want to chill out? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't been out here in 20 years. So he outlived. He was old enough to have kids. Don't say. Last time I was with my brother Calvin. Man, that was a great trip. Your grandpa's fan taught us how to fish. How to build a fire. I mean, we found an old logging trail. There were deer everywhere. Don, don't you think you could find something more interesting to photograph? Okay. <laughs> I bet if I could remember where that trail was, we'd spot a buck for you in no time. Give me a minute to check the map. Right. Dad! Good eyes, Don. Nice. Okay, we gotta... Before you take here. the shot, let me get a picture of you. You shot trying to shoot if the you animal. Want to survive, you'll need to be strong. <sighs> keep yourself squared up. Great shot, Don. Oh. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Don. <laughs> Always remember that, okay? Dad, it's twitching. I, I think it's totally so. normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about Dad! It.
of all these stories, that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me. So you mean to tell me he... He was still alive. He killed him. He fell off the cliff. Oh, man. Alright, Sam. The fact that Dawn didn't really want to do it. I'm assuming that's Dawn, right there. Oh, she has siblings. Is that? No, that's not it. That's Sam. I don't know who that woman is. I see a wedding ring. Was he married? Oh, he was. Instead of hiding from death, Sam seemed to go out of his way to meet it. Is that his wife or something? Is that the woman we saw in the picture over there? Yeah, we came in through that way. How do we get out? Oh. Maybe be careful in here. You're not falling. After Sam died, my mom and Edie got really close. They'd both lost a lot. This is a nice place to look out in the stars like that. Toy, more toys. It's a little playpen. Child, a baby, Gregory. What is it? Divorce contract, Sam Finch, Kay. Oh, so they were married. You're Kay. Do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. What? Oh, just for... I think people. he saw things the rest of us don't. Okay, so just for future references, I don't really trust the music in this game, so I just muted it, so... Sorry in advance. Sorry, I just gotta look out for my channel now. <laughs> I'm playing as the frog. What's the frog doing? Hello? Hello? We a frog. We control the frog. Not hand over Gregory. It's Ooh. time to hold on, sweetie. Um, ma'am. Hello? Sam, I told you I don't want to talk right now. Oh. Sam. I wonder what he saw. <laughs> to get these. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> you reminded me so much of Calvin. You imagine you have your twin brother? Lost in his imagination. Whatever it was, he saw. Oh. Sure made him happy. Are the ducks falling on me? Oh, okay. Got the whale. <laughs> Am I supposed to get everything off the thing? Is 
put all the toys? I know how oh. silly it sounds. What's all this for? That I worried about a baby being too happy. Yeah, they are following me, the toys. But I could feel them slipping away. Sorry about that, Gregory. Yeah, I know you did everything you could. Maybe if I hadn't called that night. What do you mean? Damn it. Oh, hold on, I don't want to wear I wish you could have told us. <laughs> about the world he saw. I, I can't get out. Oh, the baby. The baby's in the drum. There's so much I don't understand. About Gregory. About everything. Where am I? Where am I going? Oh, am I under the water? Oh, but what is all this? I know what happened wasn't your fault. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I'm sure he's happy. And he'd want you to be happy too. Good luck, Kay. Love, Sam. It's so sad. It was only one years old. Yeah, that little frog. Oh man, is they getting younger? It's a baby, Gregory. So they must have been Don's siblings. Yeah, there's three beds, Don and Gus and Gregory. Don's bed is gone. I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry and yet. Gus, 1969. 1983. A poem for Gus, Two, I mean. who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. Mm -hmm. Never pull a pipe. It's a wedding? Father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. Hmm. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I now pronounce that is husband and wife. Make his cry. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign, held up his middle finger. Oh! <laughs> the wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. There's a tent over here. buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. It's 
a storm about to happen. Thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, Make the music louder. Wow. Y'all brave to do this out here. Oh! Where are you about to go? I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't. Until we found you. What? What the hell? She never talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. So did the storm take him? Like, the debris? What were y'all doing outside the middle of a storm anyway? This door is sealed back there. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. <sighs> I don't blame her. At the her. time, it was as far away as she could get. I mean, imagine sharing a room with your dead brothers, your dead siblings. This must be Dawn's room. Dawn Sanjay, yep. That's her parents. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay. 1986. Fly to India, pack. Yeah, she was planning on going. She was leaving. I don't blame her, actually. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. Hmm. So I guess we're getting closer to Edith's siblings now. I see the missing posters came back. Her second oldest brother. Milton. When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. So she came back here? I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. Yeah, she would. Milton, Lewis, and Edith. And yeah. to see kids in the house again. So, yeah, we're getting closer to her siblings. Don. So Don moved back after Sanjay died, I think? The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. It's a nice view of it. And for a while, things were good. Almost normal. It's a whole school in here. Edith and Lewis? Lewis rules. Barbara, Gus, Molly, Sven, Odin, Calvin, Sam, Gregory. I guess they were learning about the Finches. The family didn't line. last. Scientific method. It's been a while since I learned. <laughs> Remember that? There's a baby here, right there. Milton with the crown on his head. Yeah, they had a whole school in here. Yep. The curse. Yeah, is this a curse? Because everybody's just dropping like flies in this family. The beginning of the end was Milton's 10th birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. Beginning of the end? Milton's room. Milton had his own little section over here. After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. I see gold footsteps. I see footsteps in there. I see that. Oh, I'm saving. Yeah, like these little golden footsteps. I think Edie was happy to finally have another painter in the family. Oh, he's good. He made all this? He had his own, had his 
No. What is what's the building up here? Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. Oh. The Magic Paintbrush. Isn't that the door we saw downstairs? Four when Milton disappeared. You like he went downstairs in that door downstairs next to the golden footsteps, yes? There's the paintbrush right there. I think. So is he technically dead? Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Some nice music. Yeah, this door right here. Look, like he went through here. So, is he technically still alive? Just somewhere else? Yeah. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. What he found? He must know all the secrets. That's probably why he gone. We just left him this way. I like how that captured Mom definitely our blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. Oh, we get into these stories fast. We just now finished our find out about Lewis. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room. Until mom got him a job at the cannery. Yes. Everyone always told me to stay out of Lewis's room. Except Lewis. Why? 1988 to 2010. He wasn't in that either. Probably like in his 20s, early 20s. He lives in a boat? Still traumatized by what happened to the baby. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. <laughs> that part of him was gone. Uh, where you going? I didn't say leave. Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. <laughs> that Nintendo? This was a plumber. He has a whole little setup back here. It looks just kind of like my setup a little bit. Pills. Hold on, wait a minute. Milton Finch, I mean, Lewis Finch, locker contents. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. Ooh. Oh, this is the cannery. He kept working at the cannery. Yeah, the cannery. But he withdrew part of himself. 
In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... wander. I asked him to describe it. He said he started small. Imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Then something moved. Bats. And toads. Things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. <laughs> he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. The dog. <laughs> On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. Ooh. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him. That all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for men. And he won. <laughs> they begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. Driving the ship. Steering the ship, I mean. Saving the ship? He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Lewis for me. Well, like, these fish are coming back. 
St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Minneapolis. <laughs> Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. You got to go home. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. Wow. He got to the point where he couldn't even go home. Pleaded with him to come home. She had to do all this by herself. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a handsome queen. Okay, queen. Handsome queen. <laughs> Queen was on her own quest for radiant rainbows. Radiant rainbows. Followed the sound of her. <laughs> Electric sit up. Chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Sorry for my time. Even then, his logic remained sound. Still doing this? Oh, that's the queen right there. He knew the world was all in his imagination. I can't even see the. But he was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. I don't even see the accident cut my hand or something. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. Like, and then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. Mm -hmm. My mind is drifting off. Oh, forgot all about the fish. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. Began to forget the world we know. That's just in his room, poster. In his locker. Oh, we're at the cannery. Oh, okay. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. How can we imagine what it smelled like in here? It's not the ocean. You know. Am I still in my king outfit? He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. Me. I still thought I could save him. He's not even moving the fish. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. Where am I going? The palace would be packed with his companions. Um. <laughs> Where am I going? In 
including the wise Calico, who'd insisted on inviting him. I think you know. Mrs. Finch, your son, was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. What the? Hold on. Wait a minute. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. This whole segment right here was just different because I was it was hard for me to focus on the fish and his reality I had struggled between remembering to move the fish and throw it away I was too busy focusing on him and his reality to the point where I even I forgot and I was drifting off so he put his head under the chopping thing Mental health should be talked about. It really should. But this is his psychiatrist, so. Somebody somebody was talking to him. That's something wrong. Whew. They're getting close to home. Go back in. Okay. <laughs> we can't go out that way anyway. We just left from there. Oh. Okay, I think that's all of them, really. I mean, Lewis, Milton, Edith, Edith, I mean. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. Okay, so this is what we She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. I guess at this point, Dawn was just getting tired of it. I mean, she lost both her children. She did, I'm pretty sure she didn't want to lose Edith. Either. But I understand why we left. What's that? Bubble wrap? My mom ended up leaving everything behind. Well, she didn't. She didn't bring nothing. Well, she just wanted to leave that fast. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. We're going up to Edith. There's the kite. From Gus. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. Oh, look at some little things we saw in um, Lewis's reality fantasy. That's weird. Did she make this before he passed or dirt before or after? Let's find out. This is her room. That whole last day, 
Edie just watched his pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific. I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last... I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. Where am I? The power had been shut off that morning, oh. but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. Oh, we going into their room, they say all the benches were buried in. This is spooky. That thing you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. What stories? Is she making this all up? We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning. Okay. The Finches by Edith Finch. Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you. There's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. We're going to the old There'd house. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. You no, know, I've seen that house every day of my life. But I never thought I'd go back to it. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. I can't see nothing. I got turned around. Hello? For a while, I wandered. I'm lost on the wall. I started seeing things. Oh! There's a deer that knocked us off the cliff. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. I see the ground. But when I saw them, they felt like old friends. This is debris from the house. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Couldn't move for a second. This must have been from the old house. Or maybe I came back to them. Real light thing. That's the one we saw outside. That winking light. That's a fence. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and. Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! Hmm? I kicked and screamed, but. Mom dragged me to the car. I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. The next morning, the van came to pick her up, but she was already gone. Gone? Gone like she passed, or...? After that, we moved around a lot. Oh, moving her arm. We both tried to make the best of it.
A few years went by. Hmm. My mom didn't like to talk about it. I ain't see these flowers in a long time. What do you think? You blow but on it? she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> <coughs> the rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while, and then she didn't. So much, so much and then I was alone. The last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. She's talking to the baby. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. Oh, I'm being born. The baby. He just getting birth. This journal was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you and tell you all these stories myself. But I guess if you're reading this now, things didn't work out that way. Oh no. This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. She died. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. She died? Their yeah, child? So, yeah, we we kind of figured it along the way that, yeah, that was she was talking to her child. I didn't know at the time that she was pregnant in the beginning, but when she finally did say she was pregnant, that's when it started me like, okay, so maybe the child is what remains of Edith Finch. It's basically her child. So, she was writing this journal before she died, which meant that he was, before the child was born. So it's been some years now when he finally came and put flowers on the grave, I think. So that was him in the beginning of the game that was on that boat. That um on their way here to the house. That was that was the child, not Edith. Yeah, but as I was singing throughout this entire game, it just seemed like just a curse. Something bad is going on around this house that has all everybody just dropping like flies. I don't know if, because Dawn also mentioned that, you know, her children are dead because of her stories. What stories is Edith, Edith saying? Like, if she has something to do with it? I, I hope not. Because all five of her children are dead. <laughs> she let Molly starve to death. She. I just feel like it's maybe just bad parenting on her end because I mean Sven died way before, a long time ago before she did I don't know it's not confusing I'm just trying to wrap my head around all this like did this all start when Odin tried to move his original house but he ended up thinking that that what started all this or is it just the fact that this family's just that un um, unfortunate. Like, what happened to uh, Barbara? Did she get um, attacked by a home invader or something? 
Calvin stayed under the house for a long time. And then the fact that Edie was taking stuff down there to the, 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 the little house that he was in, the cave. She could have just said, like, hey, there's nothing up here. Nothing's going to harm you. You can come back up. Instead, she just, it seemed as if she was encouraging it. Instead of being like a, a parent, a comforting mom and be like, yeah, you're safe. Nothing's going to harm you. It wasn't your fault. But instead, she just she just let him stay rot down there. Even though he managed to get out. He's been down there for a long time. She could have stopped it. But no. So I don't really blame Don for wanting to leave, basically, because besides just her children, her brothers, her aunts and uncles were just dropping like flies. Like she doesn't she doesn't know what happened to her son, Milton. She don't she don't know if he's dead or alive. I don't even know if he's dead or alive. We saw him in that um, painting he did of him going through a door. So technically, he's just not of this world. You know, he's in another realm, I guess. I don't know if he's dead there or not. But honestly, I, I enjoyed the game. I really did. It's just unfortunate how it all just happened like that. But I enjoyed it. But yeah, guys, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for coming along with me on this journey. Finding out about the Finches and what, what really remains of Edith Finch. We found that out. It's her child. Unfortunately, she died. I think she died during childbirth. We don't know who the dad is. Yeah, she... All of them are gone now. We still don't know nothing about no Milton. I'm just gonna assume that they're just gonna pronounce him dead. If that, unless they make a part two, which I highly doubt. Yeah, I can replay a story. It's available now. But thanks guys for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you later. Bye.